this is the first video I'm making using Wago's new TP600 uh, touch panel uh, HMI PLC combo. This thing has a quad core, it runs Linux, it's a powerhouse. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set this up using Docker as an AWS Greengrass core, meaning this is going to be your local endpoint for your cloud devices. Now, in the past, I've done videos on Greengrass and the Greengrass Aware devices, connecting those through the Greengrass core. We're not going to do that in this video. Uh, rather, we're going to focus on Lambda. Lambda is AWS's cloud computing platform, and you can write functions and logic in the cloud. Now, Greengrass can host that logic once you've created it in the cloud and deployed it. So this is huge. We can write our program in the cloud. We can push it down to our devices. We can use that device to communicate to local devices. Uh, and we even have the ability to do things like OPC UA and Ethernet IP from those Lambda functions. And that's exactly what we're going to demonstrate here. So if you've got the hardware, let's get set up and get started. Uh, all of the links to download the content are in the uh, description below. Let's do it. Now, if you're thinking, I don't have a TP600, but I want to follow along, if you've got a Generation 2 PFC controller that supports Docker, you can use this as the Greengrass core as well. So let's get started. Now, even though this system looks complicated, we're going to break it up into smaller steps. We're going to focus on the Greengrass core hardware and AWS. We'll begin with AWS and specifically with security. First, we're going to navigate to the AWS Management Console, uh, select the IoT core, and we're going to go to Settings. We're going to scroll to the bottom and we're going to attach a role. We want the system to create this role for us. So we'll create the role. It's going to be Greengrass Service Role. And now we're going to navigate back to the AWS console to IAM and we're going to go modify this role a little bit. We'll select our Greengrass Service Role and we're just going to attach some policies. We want to make sure that we can uh, run the full suite of Greengrass services. We also want to make sure that we can uh, communicate with IoT devices and we want to be able to log data to CloudWatch. Now our role is all set up. We have the current policies. Now we're going to go to Lambda and we're going to create our Lambda functions. If you navigate to my GitHub in the link below, uh, you can download the content for this project. We're going to download and extract this into my downloads folder. Then we're going to go to the AWS Management Console and select Lambda. We're going to create a function and we're going to title this function ggopc read write. We need to change this to Node.js version 8.10 for supporting Greengrass, and we're going to use the Lambda basic execution role. Now we're going to change the entry type to zip file, and we're going to upload the zip that is in the downloads folder. Once I've done that and I click save, you'll be able to see the code, and we're just going to make some changes here. What we really need is we need the JavaScript file to be index.js uh, located in the root of this Lambda function, so we'll just delete everything else. Now we go in here and you can see the logic. Now we have some uh, environmental variables that we're going to pass this from the instantiation in Greengrass. So uh, things like uh, the OPC UA server, the subscription node ID, and the uh, published node ID for the OPC UA side. We're going to actually instantiate those when we create the instance in uh, Greengrass. Now once this is complete, we can publish this. We're going to publish version 1, and we're going to move on now to do a, another function that's going to use SIP messaging over Ethernet IP. So we're going to create a second function. We're going to call this ggGetLogicsController.info. This is where we're going to query a compact logics controller for its uh, information. It's also going to be Node.js version 8.10 and Lambda basic execution role. Now we're just going to copy this code in. So I select the index.js. This one's going to be triggered by an incoming message, and we have the same environmental variable types here. So now we're going to publish this one as well. And once these are published, uh, we're, we're ready to go. We can now use these in our green grass core. So we're going to create that core now. Navigate back to the AWS Management Console, select IoT Core. We're going to select green grass, and we're going to create a group. So this group is going to be called Wago TP Group. If we click Next, it's going to create the core name for us, and we need to build all of these resources. Next, we're going to download the, the gzip files, and we're going to click Finish, which is going to finalize creation of this core. We need a root.ca certificate, so we'll right-click there and we'll save this as root.ca.pem. Credentials are now done. Now we just need to go modify some settings. So we'll click Finish, and we're going to go down to Settings now in this Greengrass group. We need to add a role. We're going to add our Greengrass service role that we created in the first step. 
Uh, we're going to change this uh, rotation to 30 days. We need to run this in no container mode. And then we're just going to add the ability to data log or to log our Lambda functions um, both locally and to CloudWatch. And we can do that by modifying these fields below. Once this is saved, now we're ready to add the Lambdas to our green grass group. So on the left, we're going to select Lambdas. We're going to add a Lambda. We're going to use an existing Lambda. And we're going to select our OPC rewrite version 1. Now we're going to edit this. We're going to make it long lived. And we need to add our key value pairs. So I've got these uh, from a previously created project. I'm just going to copy and paste some in here. We're going to start with OPC UA server, our sub node ID uh, that we're going to copy from here. And then we're going to have our published node ID or pub node ID. And we're just going to make a slight change. This OPC UA function is actually converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. So uh, the eCockpit project will create the Celsius float and we're going to convert that to Fahrenheit float. So once that's done, now we're going to add our second lambda. We're going to add the uh, get logics info version one. This one's a little bit different. We need to go in and edit this to add our key value pairs to this as well. Uh, we're going to have our endpoint. Uh, we can just copy these straight from our lambda project. We can go in here as a reference. We're just going to grab our IoT endpoint. We're going to need our logics address and our thing name. So our endpoint, the logics address, this is the IP address for our compact logics controller and our thing name. So we're going to just uh, paste these in the key. And in the value, uh, I've got my endpoint here. I'll copy this over. My IP address of my logics controller is 10.6.10.213. And my thing name, which is going to be my, my Greengrass core thing name, Wago TP group core. Now once we click update, this Lambda function is ready, but we now need to make sure that data gets to it. So we're going to go to subscriptions and we're going to add a subscription from the IoT cloud and we're going to pass this to our Logix controller info lam uh, Lambda. We're going to pass this uh, only topics uh, Logix slash get info. So anything that comes through on MQTT is going to get passed to that function now in the Lambda. Now we're going to move on to the hardware. First, we're going to go to GitHub, uh, github.com slash wago, and we're going to download the IPK for the controller. You can see this Docker IPK. We're going to go to the link in the readme file. We're going to click this, and we're going to download the .ipk file. Then we're going to navigate to the web-based management of the controller. We're going to just double-check some network settings to make sure that we can touch the internet. We want to make sure that we have DNS servers in here. We want to make sure that we're pointed to a router. Uh, we want to make sure that our time is correct and that we have a time server and that the time zone is also set properly. Next we can go to software uploads and we're going to look for that IPK file that we downloaded. We're going to add this. Now mine's going to error because I've already installed this, but we can upload and then you can activate this. Uh, and if it's not installed, you won't get this error. And finally, we're going to reboot the controller. Now after the PLC has rebooted, we're going to now copy over the certificates and the root.ca uh, to the PLC's home directory. I'm going to do this by opening a terminal on my Mac and I'm going to secure copy the, all the contents of the downloads folder to the home directory of the PLC. You can also use FTP for this if you prefer. Once these are copied over, I'm going to open up an SSH session with the PLC. We'll log in here using the Wago root. Uh, I advise changing your root password on the on the shell. And I've got some scripts here that I'm going to use to uh, to create hard link and symlink protection. Um, the first set is going to create the protection. The second is going to make it stick through reboot. And then if you do a, uh, the system control dash p, you can uh, just verify those changes. Now I'm going to go into the home directory and I'm going to make a new directory called Greengrass. This is where the search and the config file are going to live. I'm going to move the tarballed file into the Greengrass directory. I'm going to move the root.ca certificate into the directory as well. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to untarball this file. I'm going to run a tar xzvf with my certs and I'm just going to extract it to the Greengrass folder. So now you see I've got my certs and config file. I'm going to erase the tarball and then we'll just go verify that the certs moved and that I have a config file that is populated with the correct data. Moving on to the next step, we're going to now pull the Docker image and run the container. 
If you use the Docker Hub link in the, in the description of this video, it'll take you to my Docker image, uh, which is Wago Greengrass Core. You can see the instructions on pulling and running. Here we're going to make sure that we use the tag lambda slim. This has all the hooks in it for lambda, including Node.js, Ethernet IP, and uh, OPC UA. And we're going to pull this just using the docker pull command with the tag lambda slim. Now once this is pulled and complete, we can now we can run it. So if you go back to the overview, if you scroll to the very bottom, you can find instructions on running this. So I'm just going to copy this, and I'm going to paste this into my shell, and I'm going to run this. Uh, just as I stated in the description of the image. Once I issue the run, we're going to get some uh, some feedback, and you can use Control P, Control Q to detach, and now we're running. So the next step is going to be very simple, and uh, if you're familiar with Wagyu, you should know how to build this, but I've got an example project in the GitHub folder that you downloaded, and this is going to create the OPC UA server in eCockpit. So um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this project, but I have two variables in my globals. I have an rtempc and an rtempf. And what this program is doing is it's creating the rtempc with a little conversion from the thermocouple uh, raw value. And then it's just waiting for feedback from the OPC UA client with the rtempf. So this conversion is actually going to be done in Lambda. Um, it's very simple. Uh, but it, it at least allows you to verify communication. So I'm going to build these um, into the OPC UA symbols. We're going to connect, download the project, and run it. And you'll see when we go to the visualization that I do have an, a temperature C value running, uh, but I do not have a temperature F. It's still zero because it's not being relayed back from the Lambda function. So there we go. We're ready to, we're ready to deploy this now. I'm going to go back to my green grass group. I'm going to select Actions, and I'm going to Deploy. Once it's deployed, you can see that it's completed here. You can verify this by now navigating to the shell, going to Home, Greengrass, Logs, User, in my case US West, and my user ID. If I look at this uh, log file, I can see everything's working, and I go back to my visualization and my PLC, and I now have a temperature F. Uh, value coming from my OPC UA client, which is the Lambda function. Now finally, let's test the Ethernet IP side as well. You remember we used a subscription to pass the, uh, the MQTT message onto the Lambda function to trigger it. So now I'm going to go into test in my uh, IoT core. I'm going to subscribe to just a generic topic. and You can see my data coming from the OPC UA Lambda function. This is living on the Greengrass core. And I'm just going to send a message to Logic's get info as we set up this subscription to handle. When I send this, you'll see it responds with the data. And if I go verify this with the IoT thing shadow, um, we've updated the shadow now uh, in the Greengrass core uh, with the Logic's data. There we go. We created the Greengrass core in our Docker-enabled devices. We created some Lambda functions. We pushed those down to these devices, and we got everything communicating. It's pretty amazing. Post your questions in the comments section below. Please subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.